crown. The golden crown. I want a gold crown. You guys all should have gold crowns. We're doing pretty good. All right. Now that you have measured volume of a regular shaped object, today you're going to figure out how to measure the volume of an object that is not regularly shaped, you know, like a key or a rock or, you know, something unusual. And I'm going to tell you a story today that will get you kind of inspired to figure out how to tell the volume of an irregular shaped object by using the water displacement technique. Mrs. Tomlinson, how did you know? Yep, that is our learning target, finding the volume of an irregular shaped object by using the water displacement technique. Our first term is graduated cylinder. Oh my gosh, I didn't highlight it. Graduated cylinder. Say it with me. Graduated cylinder. Um, a graduated cylinder, you guys might know already, is a piece of lab equipment it's a tall and narrow container with a volume scale used to measure the volume of a liquid or irregularly shaped object. So you have used a graduated cylinder before. Today you're going to watch some video to remind you how you use it and to remind you how to read volume, Oh, which is a very important measurement when you are measuring matter. Second term is volume. Say it with me. Volume. And volume is the amount of space something takes up. Okay, in this section of your notebook today, at the end of the lesson, I want you to explain how to use a graduated cylinder to find the volume of an object using the water displacement technique. And you're going to look at a document, and when you look at the document, I want you to record your data in your notebook. I know that there are only 20 spaces here for you to record your data, and there are 24 um, water displacement readings that you'll need to make. Um, and just 20 of them, though, I'll have you read and submit in a document to me. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is I am going to read you a story of the gold crown. So you can fill in your notebook if you want while I'm telling you the story, but here is the story of the gold crown, and it's very famous. Okay? So the great geometer, the wise one, the master, this is a couple of the nicknames given to the Greek mathematician Archimedes. Oh, guys, can't fill in your notebook now. So here's the picture. You guys know Greek mythology and stories are always fairly interesting, but here's the story. Um, there was a man who forgot to stop for meals, and his name was Archimedes. And he was a mathematician, and he was great at math, and so he gave advice often to the ruler of Sicily, who is King Hero, who was his friend. One day, Hero asked Archimedes to help him solve a problem. Hero had hired a goldsmith and had given him a block of gold, weighing a specified amount to use to make a gold crown. When the crown was finished, Hero II weighed it. It weighed the same as the gold block the king had given the goldsmith. Yet Hero had a sneaking feeling that the goldsmith had cheated him and he had used silver as well as gold, like mixed them together, as well as gold in the crown, and he kept the unused gold for himself. How could this be proved without spoiling the crown? Archimedes mulled over the problem. It was still on his mind one day as he stepped into his bathtub. Water splashed over the edge of the tub as Archimedes settled into it. As the water dripped, a realization popped into the great mathematician's mind. The water he splashed out of the tub when he got in was equal to the volume taken up by his body. Oh, look at that volume, guys. At the moment, Archimedes knew at that moment, Archimedes knew he had the key to Hero the Second's dilemma. More water splashed on the floor as he leapt out of the tub, and without even stopping to grab a towel, he dashed out of the house. He ran down the street shouting, Eureka, which means I have found it, in Greek. No doubt the citizens of Syracuse wondered what the great mathematician had lost as he had bolted through the town. His mind, perhaps? Luckily for us, Archimedes was quite sane, even though he was forgetful about ordinary things such as towels and clothes. But what did the... what? Did the water in the bathtub have to do with whether Hero II's crown was pure gold or a mixture of silver and gold? Well, Archimedes knew that a piece of gold weighs more than a piece of silver the same size. 
According to legend, Archimedes weighed the king's crown. Then he got a piece of pure gold that weighed the same amount as the crown. He placed the gold into the bowl of water, measured how much it made the water rise, and took the gold out. Next, he put the crown into the water and saw that it made the water rise higher than the piece of gold had. Why? Because this crown was larger than one made of pure gold. The goldsmith had to make the crown larger when he substituted silver for some of the gold so that it would weigh the same as a pure gold crown. But the silver gold crown took up more space in the bowl and made the water rise higher. Because Archimedes took a bath, the dishonest goldsmith was now in hot water. Because, of course, he didn't pay attention to the volume of silver and the volume of gold because it's different, because they are different substances with different volumes and different densities. All right, so today you are going to find the different volumes of different objects and how you are going to do that is use the water displacement technique. I wish it was different and we could use graduated cylinders. We can't, so we'll have to look at some pictures. So one of the things that you're going to look at is the pictures that look like this. What you're going to do is you're going to take the volume of the graduated cylinder with the object out, right? So that's like four milliliters. And then after this item is put in, you're going to notice how much the water went up or how much the water was displaced. And then you will find the volume of the object. So here, just as a sample, number one, we have four milliliters without the object, four milliliters. And with the object in the water, we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 milliliters. And if you take the difference, 13 subtract four, you get nine milliliters, okay? To do number two, if we look carefully, we have five milliliters. After the object is put in, we have 10 milliliters. So our volume is 10 subtract 5 is 5 milliliters. You get to do the rest, and you get to submit them on a Google form for credit. You now know the story of the golden crown and the bathtub, and you know why it's important to measure the volume of different objects that are irregularly shaped. Have an amazing day, and I hope you all end up with gold crowns.